What's going on, guys? I wanted to demo a new mouse script that I wrote for the current project I'm working on. So in this project, we have two main characters. One is Mr. Tubson. Try not to flip you guys off. One is Mr. Tubson, and two is Slink. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, those characters, I have demo videos for each. Um, definitely suggest you check them out. You know, they're the cute, funny characters. Um, you know, very tomb like and animated. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're relatively simple characters. You know, Mr. Tubson, you know, he's, he's just like, he starts from a cube and then he goes into, um, you know, the simplest uh, form of, of any type of character. You know, I, I, I just basically pull the corners out with his legs, his arms, and his head, and, you know, he's done and he just jiggles around. Um, and Slink is just basically a Slinky. And that's what we're going to focus on. That's the model that we're going to focus on. Um, in this video. So um, I'm going to just throw Slink up on screen so you guys can see him. And um, I'm not going to talk too much about him because I already did like a super long 15 minute video about him. But um, I'm just going to show you guys how he basically moves, just basically jumps around. And um, like I said, relatively simple uh, model and everything. Um, but it has all of these parameters in it that you can tweak and really get, you know, the, all these complex, like this is the, there, there's the full control HUD of it, um, all these complex animations and everything out of it um, to completely change the way that it looks. Um, you know, you even have these, uh, um, you know, you can, you can move the controllers around on the base to change the angle, the trajectory of the, uh, of the slink path, you know, you can do all of these types of things. And so I thought, you know, hey, wouldn't it be cool if um, I could, uh, if I could create like a whole, you know, crowd of these things, you know, and, and how could I do that really fast? Um, so it's, it's where I could, you know, basically create a crowd generator so I wouldn't have to hard code um, each individual Slink model's um, properties. So uh, that's what I did for the last week. Um, and yeah, let's see, I'm just going to reset everything. And we're going to go back to the beginning. All right. So um, to use the crowd generator, uh, this works for any model, which is super sweet because uh, it allows you to randomize standard attributes, custom attributes, um, master handles, secondary handles, everything. Um, so uh, one second. Just going to make it so the mouse doesn't blink because it is driving me crazy. All right. So uh, to use the script, basically you um, just run it, and I'm just going to make a melt shelf right there. All right. Boom. So um, oh, what was that? All right. You click run. We're running. All right. So now choose a crowd based model. Got it. You choose slink model. Select. Now in our name prefix for the group crowd of models that you want to import. So basically, um, if you want to have different groups that you're importing, so like let's say a stage right group, a stage left group, if you want to have like maybe um, in your scene you have um, uh, different levels of detail or you have um, your foreground, background, um, maybe you have two armies and you like red army, green, green army, blue army, whatever. Um, this is just some way to uh, separate like that current crowd group. So I'm just going to call this stage right. Um, so we hit enter, and it imports that model, and now we have just the base model. Um, you know, we can hit play, uh, just for a second. Alright, so yeah, we can hit play. Um, you know, it's pretty much the exact same thing I showed with the model by itself. Um, so, uh, we want to, um, it, we basically need to select one or more controls to randomize and click OK. Now, this won't actually randomize them right away. What this is doing is this is saying, um, which controls do you want to be able to randomize? Um, so I'm going to select the master. The master is always the first one that you select. Um, and I'm going to select the master, the GUI interface, the speed node, the length node. And I'm also going to select these uh, overrides on the um, uh, the front and back of the slinky. And so then I'm going to select OK. And uh, we get this GUI 
that's created. And um, the first one is the control master GUI, and it lists all the standard attributes on it all, and the custom attributes. Um, so we have the GUI container, all the standard attributes, and it uh, pulls in all of the custom attributes. So um, like I said, this will work for any model that you want to bring in, and it's going to bring in all the standard attributes, all the custom attributes, and you're going to be able to set up a base number to randomize, and then a range to randomize around it. So, for example, um, just to really see this stuff going, uh, see, this, see this guy in action, um, let's go ahead and click on reference crowd models. And I'm going to reference the slink model again. Now you could reference a completely different model. As long as it has some of the similar attributes, um, let's say the standard attributes, uh, or maybe it has uh, some of the custom attributes. It doesn't matter because the, the script actually will look for a specific attribute, and if it's not there, it actually won't set it. So you could take information from one model and push it into a completely different model. That's, um, that, that would work. Uh, so just to make this super interesting, I'm going to reference in 100 models. Um, and uh, actually, you know what? You know what? Just so that uh, the computer doesn't actually die, we're going, we're going to reference about 10. And then at the end of this video, I'll uh, reference like 100, 200, and I'll play, best, play blast it out so you guys can see it. Um, all right, so we're going to hit OK. And you can see in the bottom left, it's referencing in each model sequentially. And the really cool thing about the way that reference in, references this in, if I pop open my outliner, um, the very first model that we referenced in was our crowd model stage right null. Um, and that was actually, that's the positioning model. Um, then when we clicked reference crowd models, we actually got um, all these sequential models that you can see in the outliner, um, crowd model stage right uh, underscore one, crowd model stage right underscore two. Um, all of those namespaces are uh, named sequentially, so you can um, so you can keep you know really or organized outliner. There's no um, names namespace problems. Um, everything stays nice and happy. All right, so uh, just to um, let's see, I'm gonna select the null uh, controller, and I'm gonna just pull this right over here. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and the cool thing about the null controller is all of the other crowd objects are randomized based on the current null um, controller's position, scale, rotation, all of that. So if I just go ahead and hit randomize on, um, on the master uh, frame, it's going to disappear from here and it's actually going to jump right there. The reason why nothing randomized is because we don't have any random range. So I'm going to change the range to, let's see, 50 and 50 on translate X and on translate Z. And what that means is the base is zero. So um, basically, this, this is the new zero, the new world zero. So in X and Z, meaning it's going to spread out, um, it's not going to move up and down, but it's just going to spread out to a radius of 50, um, anywhere in that radius of 50. Uh, either you know 50 to 50 units left, right, forward, or backward, and just randomize. And I'm also going to um, change the rot uh, rotation y, so we get a little bit change, uh, a little bit direction change. So I'm gonna hit randomize, Oop. and you can see we already have our little crowd going on. Um, hit play, and we only randomized the position and rotation. So everything's still moving re uh, relatively the same. Um, again, you can see I, I have those little controls on there. I think that's the null object. Um, but let's, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Um, so I'm going to rewind the clock. Uh, I'm going to go down here to the GUI controller, and I'm going to change when the, th uh, when the slink actually starts, um, when the animation starts. So I'm going to make the base. Um, 40, or actually 30, yeah, let's do 30. Um, the frame start, uh, so, the, so it's, the frame start base will be 30, and the random range will be 20. That means it can either start on frame 10, all the way to frame 50. Um, and let's see, I'm going to change the radius of the slink. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hit randomize, so you can see here. Change it again. You want, you want some more radius. There we go. Yeah, something like that. 
Um, and let's see, we're going to change the uh, speed node to something that we like. And oh, the length node, definitely. All right, so uh, this will change the length of this length. And now I'm going to change the, uh, let's see. Uh, this is basically just changing the front and back of the slink, so it's going to change the tra trajectory over how it slinks back. So instead of doing a nice, like, happy um, arc like that, the arc is going to, like, maybe, maybe be a bit, like, I don't know, uh, swirly, slithering along. Um, be, be fun. It'll be a good experience. All right, so... Uh, Negative five and four is the range, and we're at five and four. All right, so we're going to randomize, randomize, and our length randomize, and let's see, speed over low, and let's let's back this up. Oh, there we go. All right, so here I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to hit play. Let's see what we got. Ooh, everybody's going along. So see, remember, we started with just this simple null model right here. And look at, like, all the randomization that we got with all the, you know, we were getting um, some interesting, like, swirly twisting and, and flipping and, and whatnot. Um, but, you know, this was created, like, and, you know, you know I was, granted, I was talking about it as I was doing it, but, you know, it was created just, like, a couple of minutes. And, you know, um, imagine what you could do with, like, 100 or 200 of these fields, you know, just all going around um, to values that, uh, uh, that you specify. You know, you can get some really crazy-looking animations um, really quickly. Uh, now, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and play, back, play Blast out a... Uh, thing with the 100 or 200 miles. So um, uh, thanks again for watching, and um, I'll, uh, I'll release the project with uh, all these characters as, um, as soon as I get everyone out. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys soon.